say, don't be in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? All comes back to timing. You know, it's interesting. God shows us so much in the Bible about timing. And we're going to take a few, uh, we're going to look at a few things this morning in regards to timing and what God is doing. Because he does everything at the right time. Amen? So if you have your Bibles, open up to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And as you're turning there, I'm going to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we dedicate this time to you, Lord. We ask that you speak to us through your word. We give you glory. We give you honor. Oh, Lord, and we just ask you to just uh, bless this time, Lord. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone says, amen, amen and amen. You know, last week we were talking about love. We were in 1 John chapter 4, and we looked at a number of verses in 1 John chapter 4 because we get a good explanation of the love of God. You know, and as we're preparing, you know, in this Christmas season, you know, uh, I like to look at it as a, as, a, as a season, right? You see the sayings and the different things out there, seasons, greetings, right? We go from Thanksgiving to Christmas to New Year's, so we kind of lump them all together. And, 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 you know, it's this time, you know, a season, you know, of being thankful and, you know, and, and, and being happy and, you know, you know, just wanting to just, you know, it brings out the best in everybody. Amen? And so we were talking about love. Because in 1 John 4, 7, the Word of God says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. You know, so it tells us, you know, so much about love. Right? And so... As we get ready to celebrate Christmas in the next few weeks, we, we see love come down and express himself, right? God manifested himself, right? And we know that word manifest means to reveal is what's happening. And so this morning we're in 1 Peter 1.20. And look at what the word of God says here. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. It says, he indeed was for ordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these times for you in other words we're looking at timing the timing of the birth of christ and it occurred exactly at the right time see because the word of god shows us here that god planned this before he even created planet earth before he created mankind and everything else that he created, he had planned this event. It says it here in his word. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. And then it says, but was manifest in these times for you. In other words, it was made you know, for us to you know, see it. It was revealed to us. right? Now we're going to go look at one more scripture. And here in Galatians chapter 4, go back here a little bit, a few chapters. We're going to the book of Galatians. And we're going to see something here regarding timing. Because this is what we're looking at. The timing that God used. So we're going to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians. Right before the book of Ephesians. Okay, so Galatians 4 verse 4. The word of God says, But when... The fullness of time had come. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Fullness of time. In other words, this time was appointed by God. And the whole reason why is this was God's plan for salvation, right? And you hear that word oftentimes, right? You hear people say, well, I thank God for my salvation, right? Or some people may even say, are you saved? Right? They use this terminology in the church. Right? And, and those outside the church that aren't familiar with a lot of these words and terminology that we have, you know, uh, it kind of can sound like a foreign language. But salvation simply defined means deliverance. 
We were delivered. Why did we need to be delivered? Because of the curse that was on man that was the direct result of the sin from the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Remember in Genesis when Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God, they ate from the tree, right, of the knowledge of good and evil, and so uh, they were kicked out of the garden, right? And if we look a little more deeper into that, you know, story of Adam and Eve in the garden, there's more to it than meets the eye. See, what was happening was that they were in the Garden of Eden, which was representative of man being in the presence of God. That's what the whole Garden of Eden thing was going on or was about in a nutshell. Man being in the presence of God. And you need to read that if you haven't read it because, see, in Genesis we see that God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. He was there with them. And how do we know he was there with them? Well, not only does the Bible tell us that, but what happened after Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they ate from that tree? Immediately, the Bible tells us they realized they were naked. And the Bible says they were ashamed, right? They were ashamed. It's kind of funny, I'm thinking of this. You know, yesterday morning, I was getting out of the shower, and uh, luckily I had a towel wrapped around me. And uh, my little granddaughter comes in the room. And I'm like, I'm naked. The door wasn't locked. And so, thankfully, Pastor Trish took her out. Oh, come on, you got to come out of the room. We're getting ready. You know, she didn't need to have those images in her mind. <laughs> right? But isn't it amazing how we react when, we're, when our nakedness is exposed? Just like Adam and Eve. Right? When our nakedness is exposed. What, has any, have any of you ever been in a public place and forgot to lock the bathroom door and somebody walks right in? Right? And what's your first reaction? <gasps> oh, you know, it's like you want to cover up, you know, right? It's just like, I don't know, it's just a natural reaction of our nakedness being exposed. There's a, there's a, a I don't know, an, an embarrassment type thing that goes with it. But, you know, Adam and Eve felt the same way when they were in the garden. Immediately the Bible says that, they, they, you know, realized they were naked, so they hid in the bushes. They hid in the bushes because God had asked them, hey, where are you? And he found them hiding in the bushes. And he says, why are you hiding in the bushes? And they, because we're naked. And then he goes and asks them, well, who told you you're naked? Because they didn't know anything about being naked. Remember, they were the first people on planet Earth, right? They were in that garden in their birthday suits, right? And they didn't think twice about it. Right? So their nakedness was exposed. Right? And so they were kicked out of the garden. Right? And there, ever since then, there's been a curse on mankind. Right? And if you read the book of Genesis, you'll see what that is. Right? There's some things that God had said to man that separated man from God. Right? Therefore, in order for God to restore the relationship between man and God, he had to do something. See, because when God sets something into motion, he can't, in the middle of it, change his mind and go back on his word, right? Has anyone ever gone back on their word with you? They told you something and then they changed their mind, right? If I've gone back on my word to you, I apologize. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we want to be people of our word, right? You ever heard this? I'm a man of my word, right? But it can happen, right? But the thing is this, when it comes to God, he doesn't go back on his word. What's very interesting, as you study the scriptures, you'll see that if God were to go back on any of the word that's in this Bible, his word, what would it mean? It would mean that it was, it's all based on a lie, if God went back on his word. I love the scripture that says, God is not a man that he should lie. I love that. There's another scripture that says God's word does not return void. Think about it. There are so many people out there that are trying to prove this book right here wrong. They're just trying to prove this book wrong because they don't want to accept what it says. Because in this book is so much truth and, and so much, you know, um, reality for us that sometimes we don't want to accept everything that it has to say 
And, and because of that, we don't want to, you know, follow it. And so some people take it a step further. It's one thing not to follow the word of God. That's one thing. But it's another thing to say, you know what? I don't agree with that, what that says, and I'm going to prove it wrong. And what I love about these guys who try to do that is that time after time, they have failed. They have failed to prove this book wrong because you can't. It is the Word of God. It has endured the test of time. Think about it. This book has endured the test of time. Thousands of years, this book has been in existence. It hasn't always been in, in one little nice book that we open up like we have. It has maps in the back, and some of us have thumb indexes, right? And some of us, you know, have our, uh, the letters of Jesus in red, the red letters, right, in the New Testament, you know, or a concordance built in. It hasn't always been like that. They were originally written on scrolls, right? And they were written, you know, in different, over time, different time periods, and they put them together. Now, some people must, may say, well, Pastor, Men wrote that book. Men wrote this book. Yes and no. Yes, there were men who pinned down the letters to this Bible, but it wasn't their words. They were inspired by God to write these words. They were God-inspired. right? God inspired them to put these words down. And that's what the Bible teaches us, is that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Yes, men put the letters down, they put the ink to the page, but they, they didn't come up with the concepts. It was God giving it to them. And that's why it has endured the test of time, because this book is, no, is unlike any other book. You pick up any other book, and you read it from, from uh, the table of contents all the way to the very end of the book, it's going to stay the same. Nothing will change. This right here is different. This book is the word of God. Therefore, this word is living. Living. What does that mean? That means that God can give you something totally different one day to the next when you read the very same verse. That's how powerful this word is. He can give you something different because the word of God is powerful. Amen? The Word of God is powerful. So he tells us, as we read in 1 Peter 1.20, right, and also in Galatians 4.4, he's talking about bringing Jesus to the world. And the timing of him bringing Jesus was just at the perfect time. Just at the perfect time when he brought Jesus to planet Earth. His timing was right on the mark. And that's what we need to understand when it comes to God in our lives. Every one of us here is in expectation of something or is going through something or is worrying about something. Every single person here from a, on a daily basis is constantly thinking about things. Right? We're thinking about things. Well, God, when are you going to answer my prayers? I've been waiting. You know, I, I keep buying these tickets every Wednesday and Saturday from Joe's Liquor, and these are supposed to be the numbers. I told you if I win, Lord, I'm going to give some money to the church, you know, and maybe help some other people out. But, Lord, these are my numbers. When? Right? Everyone's waiting. See, the thing is this, is that too many people are worrying about many things. Right? When is it a good time for our single people to get married, start a family, buy a house, change jobs, or some of us retire? When can we retire? When's a good time, right? Everything is based on timing, timing. And see, the thing is this, is that when it comes to timing, if we're impatient and we get tired of waiting, Right? What can happen is it can cost us our life. It could cost us years. It could cost us money. It could cost us happiness. Because why? Because we get impatient. Right? We get impatient. So that is why we have to learn 
how to wait on God because his timing is always right. See, now the thing is this, is that patience is something that we need to exercise because it's part of the process, right? Too many people don't want to wait for anything. We've talked about it before, right? We are such an impatient uh, um, um, generation, I guess we can call it. We're so impatient as people, everything now is instant, right? They even created uh, uh, drive through windows for us. I don't even want to get off the car to get my cup of coffee. I'm going to go through the drive through because I don't got time. Or I'm comfortable. I'm all fastened in already, so I don't want to get off the car. So I'm going to drive through. Think about it. Everything is instant in our lives. We, we don't want to wait for nothing, right? We don't want to wait for, for you know, we go through the drive through and we're like, it's been one minute. What's taking them so long? This is the whole reason why I came here, because I didn't want to take the time to cook to eat, so I'm going through drive through to get my stuff. I want it in 30 seconds, right? We're just, we get impatient, right? That's just what happens. But see, as believers, we have to learn to start trusting God in regards to everything in our life. See, if we start to trust God, we will start to make better decisions. And when we stop making decisions out of impatience, we will stop spending unnecessary money. Anybody ever done that? Right? Anybody ever done that? I, I've been there. You know, I, I've been there, right? Where I've had to go and buy another tool because I didn't, you know, keep my other tool put away where I should have put it. And I lost track of it. It got lost somewhere. And it's like, I don't got time to go digging through the garage for this tool. I'll just go have to buy another one. And then when you get around to cleaning the garage, you're like, oh, I got like three of them. Right? Right? Am I the only one? <laughs> right? You know, so, so the thing is this, is getting back to talking about, you know, timing, being patient. We can learn some things, you know, from others. But most of all, learning to trust God because... You know, his timing is perfect. And it can be perfect for us as well in our lives if we learn to depend on him. Let me share something with you. I want to share a couple of stories with you out of the Old Testament. Let's go to the uh, uh, book of 1 Samuel, Old Testament here. Okay, we're going to go to 1 Samuel. And we're going to go to chapter uh, 13. So right before the book of Kings, I believe, 1 Samuel 13. And look at what the Word of God shows us here. Now, I'll give you a little background here before we get into to this little story. What's happening here is that the nation of Israel has, been, uh, has received their first king. They had never had a king over them. So the people had been wanting a king, and finally, uh, you know, God tells uh, the prophet Samuel to anoint a guy named Saul to be king over Israel. And so they have a king now. And what's been customary for the nation of Israel, what is dynamic, is that they always turn to God before they go to battle. Isn't that an interesting concept? Before they go into battle with their enemy, they pray, right? They have a, a, you know, they have a, a, a custom of you know, praying to God and, and you know, lifting him up and having a time of worship you know, before going into battle. Not a bad concept, right? Well, here is an opportunity for them to do that. And the king, King Saul, you know, he's waiting to lead his men into battle. And he's getting impatient. But l l let me back up a little bit here because I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. What's happening is they want to do a, a, uh, an offering to God, right? They want to do an offering to God. And, you know, usually the, 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 the priest, the man of God, does the offering. And Saul gets impatient and look what happens here verse 17 we're in first samuel chapter 13 uh verse 17 is that what i said we're at oh, i'm sorry first samuel 13 verse 9 first samuel verse chapter 13 verse 9 yeah okay i'm getting ahead of myself okay so saul said bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me and he offered the burnt offering in other words, what the king is doing is he's doing the job of the man of God. He wasn't supposed to do that. But he got impatient waiting 
for the man of God to come and do what he had to do. Impatience, right? Impatience. Look at verse number 10. Now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering that Samuel came. Samuel's the prophet. And, Sa and Saul went out to meet him that he might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? What, has anybody ever, your little kids, right? What have you done, right? So he says to him, what have you done? Saul said, when I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash. Then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. Right? Things weren't looking good for, for the nation of Israel at this time and the king got concerned and I get it, right? He's in a bind, right? His enemy's kind of moving in on him. And he's like, before we go to battle, we, we, we got to offer an you know, offering to God. And, and uh, hey, Samuel, you, you were late, you know? So we, we, we had to, you know, we got to get the show on the road. You know, it's like, hey, we, we got to get this done. But see, what's interesting is that when we get impatient with anything in our lives and we make a decision, it could cost us. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes it could cost us money, right? Sometimes it can cost us our life. You know, the list goes on. Let's look at what it cost Samuel. We uh, just finished reading uh, verse, what was that? 12, right? Verse 13, Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Who's that? David, remember? Who succeeds Saul? David, known as a man after God's own heart, right? Okay, another story. So he says, but your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So what ends up happening is Saul's reign as king is shortened because of his impatience. He disobeyed, uh, like he said, the commandment of God. He took these matters into his own hands. And it cost him, you know, the, being king. It cost him. It cost him big time is what happened. You know, so, so the thing is this, is that in any time when we're waiting for something, as hard as it may be, we got to learn to trust God. And, and we have to get out of that impatient mode because the price may be too costly. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Keep going backwards here in the Old Testament. We're going to chapter 13. And here's one more example. Right? Timeliness. Exodus chapter 13. We're going to verse 17. Right? So here we're going to see something. And, I, and I'll, I'll point that out to you after we read it. Exodus 13, verse 17. We're going to read verse 18. And then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near for God, that was near for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Verse 18. So God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. So what we're seeing here is that God, right, is showing us that he led the Israelites, right, he, he, he took them the long way around to get to where they needed to go. He took them the long way, right? The longer, harder way on their journey is what we're seeing here. Because they were not ready to go into the promised land. They were not ready. And so God took them on this longer journey. See, there had to be time for them 
to go through some training, right? There had to be time because you've got to understand the children of Israel at this point in time were coming out of 400 years of captivity. They didn't know how to do a lot of things because they were in captivity for so long and told what to do seven days a week, you know, day in, day out, right? from generation to generation to generation, 400 years, that they lost all concept of rule and order, you know, that they used to know. So all they knew was basically get up, go to work, go home, go to sleep, get up, go to work. They didn't know anything else. And we've mentioned this before. That is why very soon after Moses came down from the mountain, Mount Sinai, with the Ten Commandments, those weren't the only laws that God had for the, for the children of Israel, right? Because there were a lot of things that they didn't know how to do. And therefore, as you start to read the Old Testament and you go into, you know, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and you start reading all these Old Testament books, you start to see that God threw all kinds of rules at them, right? He threw all kinds of rules at them. He's like... This is what you do, you know, when you prepare your food. You know, uh, this is how you, you know, clean yourself. You know, uh, women, when you're going through that time of month, when the visitor comes, you've got to stay away from everybody, right? They had rules for everything, teaching them how to have some order in their life because they were coming out of an environment where they didn't have any. They didn't have any rule or order in their life. So God had to put all kinds of rules in place for them to follow. But getting back to what we were reading in Exodus, what was going on was they were leaving, they were on their journey, and it was only supposed to be, I can't remember, but like a couple-week journey maybe. It wasn't that long of a journey from where they were coming from to the promised land. And it ended up taking them 40 years. 40 years to get from point A to point B, you know, but the thing was they weren't ready. They weren't ready to enter. The timing wasn't right for them to enter the promised land, right? So we get so much out of that story, right? So I want to just emphasize with you, whatever is going on in your life at this very moment, just remember, timing, timing. Is it God's timing or is it your timing? Lean on God. Let him show you. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. We're talking about timing this morning. Oh, and God has the perfect timing. He sent Jesus at the perfect time to planet earth right when we needed him. So Proverbs chapter 16, we're going to go here to verse number uh, 9. Proverbs 16, verse number 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Right? See, we can come up with our own plan but ultimately, God has a better plan. Amen? God has a, a better plan. And He will direct you if you let Him. I know sometimes we'll do it kicking and screaming, right? And then we realize, oh, okay, I get it now. Right? Because it's our nature sometimes. Right? I, how many of you have ever seen the, the guy trying to pull the mule? He don't want to go. And he's just like, I ain't going nowhere. And mules weigh a lot of, I don't know what a mule weighs, but they weigh hundreds of pounds. And you got this guy trying to pull the mule. And guess what? <laughs> he's not budging. He doesn't want to go. And so who's going to win that battle right there? <laughs> the mule's going to win the battle, right? Because he does not want to go. He's not budging, right? And, and we sometimes can be like that, right? God wants to lead us. He wants to direct our steps. He's saying it right here. The Lord directs his steps. See, God wants to help us. But see, sometimes we can be like that stubborn mule. Just be like, nope, not going nowhere. I'm staying right here. 
right? And we don't realize that God has something better for us planned, but we want to dig in our hills, we get stubborn, we want our way, right? And that is why this whole relationship thing that we're working on with God, right, this, this relationship we have with him is one where we learn to trust him. As we grow in our relationship with the Lord Jesus, we're learning how to trust him, even when we don't understand, right? Because oftentimes, he's leading us. He might, he might as well be leading us blindfolded, right? Because sometimes we have no concept, like, where are we going? I don't understand, Lord, what's going on. I didn't ask for this. I didn't sign up for this. But yet, if you allow him to, he'll lead you and he'll guide you. And he's, gonna, he's not going to do you wrong. He has your best interest at heart. It's learning to let go, and it's learning to trust him. Amen? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Proverbs 20, verse 24. And the word says right here, A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? See, we have to learn to rely on God. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Yeah, I just got to learn how to rely on God. And my life will be great. But it's not that simple because we don't let it be that simple. Because we, as people, we have to analyze everything. Right? We got to know everything. We want to know everything that's going on. Right? And if that's not true, why is it? Every time I go to the supermarket checkout, we were just there the other day, and we're checking out, and they got all these magazines, right? And they tell us all the stuff that's going on, right, of all these famous people in the world, right? And, uh, you know, there's that one magazine that says, inquiring minds want to know, right? Right? We just want to know, right? W what does it do for us if, you know, um, I don't know, I can't remember some of the headlines, but, you know... Uh, I'll just throw something out there, I guess. I can't think of uh, it. But, uh, you know, if they're talking about these celebrities, what does it matter to us what they had for breakfast? Oh, maybe I might want to have that, you know. If, you know or uh, they were, uh, I don't know, they were shopping here at this store. Hey, maybe I might want to shop at that store, you know, kind of a thing. You get where I'm, where I'm going here? You know, some of the stuff that, that these magazines have, to me, it's kind of funny. And then there's ones that are way out there. There's pictures of UFOs and aliens. And you just got to laugh to yourself. Like, I got to create one of these magazines. And I'm going to write about all the people in the church. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everyone got kind of quiet right there. What? Put my business out there? So the bottom line is this is that we got to learn to trust God. We got to learn to rely on God because. If you don't, you're going, to be en you're going to end up making your own decisions and oftentimes you're going to get impatient and timing's not going to be right. And, and we talked about it. When the timing's not right, it can cost you. It can cost you dearly if the timing is not right. I couldn't tell you how many people you have told me, I've married the wrong person. You just figured that one out. Why did you get married? Well, we were in love. Oh, that's a whole other story. The bottom line is this. We sometimes get impatient, so we got to learn to wait on God. Amen? Sometimes we end up taking the wrong job, and then we realize it, and we're like, I'm in the wrong line of work. I'm in the wrong business. Right? How many times do uh, kids in school end up changing their, their uh, what do you call that? Their majors. Thank you very much. Right? Because they realize... Oh, that's not what I wanted to do after I've been doing this studying for two years, three years. I think I want to go this direction. And that's okay. They're young. They can do that. But, but what I'm trying to say is, is that we got to learn to trust God when it comes to decision making. Because see, everything that he does is perfect, right on time. Even if we don't understand, amen? Amen. Because oftentimes we're not, we don't understand how things are done or why these things are happening. But see, we've got to learn to trust Him. And that trust comes with 
a strong relationship. I've said it many times. You cannot have a strong relationship with God if you don't spend no time with him. Because any relationship that you have, even the one that's not with God, right? It takes time and effort to build a strong relationship. If you're not putting the time and you're not putting the effort in the relationship, the relationship's not going to be strong, right? So you take that understanding to your relationship with God. If you're not putting enough time in and in, in effort in your relationship with God, you're never going to get to the place to just trust him to control your life. When you say, you know what, Lord, my life is yours. Just tell me what you need me to do. Because you don't trust. There's not 100% trust there with him. And that's because of a lack of time and effort in the relationship. See, as you spend time and effort in that relationship, the trust is going to grow. And you're going to get to the place where you're going to say, you know what, I trust you because I know you. You get to know somebody, then there's trust built there, right? So we got to learn how to rely on God. And he shows us here in his word that he'll order our steps, right? He'll order our steps. A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way, right? We don't got to understand it. We just got to trust him because he will lead us and guide us the right way. Amen? So as we get ready to close, we've been looking about at, at timing. Timing is very important in our lives, right? Timing is very important. It's, it's crucial, right? It's very crucial. So we want to be able to trust God so he can give us the right timing. Just like when he sent Jesus to planet Earth, he showed us in his word that he did it at the right time. We've seen that in the book of Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. We've seen that in 1 Peter 1.20. Right, that the timing of the birth of Christ occurred exactly at the right time. And we find out that he even planned it before he created planet Earth. He planned it before he created planet Earth, but he had the t right timing in mind. So when it comes to your life, and you're making decisions in your life, remember, God has the right timing. You just got to learn to trust him. We don't want to be like Saul. We've seen that in the book of Samuel. What did he do? He got impatient. He got tired of waiting. And he just says, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to have to take matters into my own hand. And it cost him. It cost him. Or we see like God leading the nation of Israel out of slavery to the promised land. And they weren't ready yet. They weren't ready. So... They needed some preparation time. And that's the way we need to look at things sometimes. You know, we're, we're thinking that, well, why isn't this happening fast enough? Maybe we're not ready yet. Maybe God wants us to be more prepared. Amen? And so that's why we got to learn to trust him. But see, everything, when it comes to God, is always perfect timing. Perfect timing. And that's what I love so much you know, about what he reveals to us in his word, right? He reveals it to us. I, I want to share that with you one more time before we close here. Back in, in Galatians uh, chapter 4, we were in verse number uh, 4, and I want to read that to you again. Because the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. We got to keep hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So here in Galatians 4, 4, it says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God set forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Isn't, isn't that so interesting? When the fullness of time had come, the time appointed by God, that's the fullness of time. That was God's plan for salvation, as we started talking about in the beginning of service. That was the right time, right? When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. So his timing is perfect, always, always right on time. 
And our timing can be perfect too if we learn to trust Him. Amen? And I just want to encourage you. Understand that. Don't be caught up in things taking too long. Wherever you're at in life, whatever you got going on, you're thinking, it's not happening too fast. Slow down. Slow down and just lean on God. Easier said than done, I know. But the more that you practice it, the easier it becomes to trust God. See, could you imagine if you're practicing this concept of leaning on God, right? Relying on God for little things. When you get to the big things, it's, you know, you have some practice at it. And so you're able, you know, to, to start trusting Him. But you've got to start somewhere, amen? You've got to start somewhere. If you don't put it into practice, you know, how are you, how are you going to get to that place? So we want to get to the place of relying on God, trusting Him, because His timing is perfect, right? And so I just want to encourage everyone as we get ready to close, God's got the perfect timing for you, whatever it is. Perfect. It's been planned out. But you have to let him, you have to let him direct you. You have to let him order your steps as we read in the book of Proverbs, right? We have to allow him to guide us, right? You, you got to allow him to take the lead, right? It's letting him take you by the hand, right? Not you taking him by the hand. Now, come on, God, we're, we're going over here. Let's go. Let him take you. Let him lead you, right? Because he's got the perfect plan. Right now, you can do it your way, and I've been there, I've done it my way. It doesn't always work out so good. But when you let God lead you and guide you, and you, le you rely on Him, man, things just have a way of being better than you even could have planned them yourself. Right? They come out better than you could have even thought possible. That's why the word says in Ephesians 3:20, He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all, you can ask or think. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. Let God lead you. Rely on Him. Right? That's, that's what it comes down to. And guess what? You'll find yourself making better decisions. You'll find yourself in better situations instead of like... Talking to yourself again like, how did I get myself into this one? Oh, I got myself into another mess again. What do I do? Right? Anybody ever had those conversations with themselves? Oh, I'm the only one? Okay. <laughs> oh, I see a few hands going up now. Okay. Oh, we got to learn to trust God. Amen? And so I just want to encourage you to know that when you do that, things are going to work out better than you planned. Amen? If everyone could just bow their heads and close their eyes. Oh, Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your word that doesn't return void. I thank you for your people, Lord. And, Lord, I pray for them, Lord, that, that they would just have a desire to want to trust you more because they understand that you can do things perfectly. Your timing is perfect. Lord, and so I, I just ask that you would just, you know, help your people learn to trust you more so that they can see even more of your goodness in their lives, Lord. And Lord, we lift you up and we thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor, Lord. We thank you for your word that doesn't return void. And Lord, we thank you for those real life examples that we don't want to be like King Saul and get impatient and take matters into our own hands. And we don't want to take 40 years to get there like the children of Israel because we're not ready. Lord, help us so that we can be ready. Help us be prepared, Lord. And help us not to be impatient, but to just trust in you no matter how long it takes because we know you will get us there. Oh, Lord, we thank you this morning. We give you glory and we give you honor in the precious name of Jesus. And everyone says... Amen and amen. God is good. Amen.